Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about what to do with your constant velocity car lab data uh, and how to put it into Logger Pro to check to make sure that you did it right. So you can see from this assignment on Schoology, you need to download the attached blank Logger Pro file. That's this. So you download that. Uh, then you're going to watch this post lab video about entering your data, which is what you are currently doing. Um, and eventually, you're going to save your Logger Pro file and upload it to this assignment. Uh, so once you have downloaded the Logger Pro file, open it. You need to already have or don't have Logger Pro open. Um, so if you had a Logger Pro tab open before you started this video, make sure you close it. This will open Logger Pro fresh, and it should look like this. And I've gone ahead and labeled everything and made it pretty for you, position versus time. Uh, and what you're going to do is you're going to go in and starting with time zero and a position of zero, assuming that you were able to start the stopwatch when the car crossed the starting line, uh, I want you to go ahead and pause this video and put in your times and positions. So your times should all be going up by two seconds and the positions dependent on your car. So pause the video and enter your data. <gasps> so here you can see my data magically uploaded. Um, and you should notice that the positions are in centimeters, so hopefully they're going up um, no decimals. So you probably have a couple of hundred centimeters. And that the positions are getting bigger, but they are not the same number over and over and over. Now you should see Logger Pro has put these data points in for you. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to scale this graph a little bit for ourselves. So mouse over the Y maximum, which is 800. And it looks like I don't have a value above 400, so I'm going to put in 400. You just literally put in 400, then enter for my maximum value. Okay, and the scale has changed. Uh, and if I wanted to change this, right now it's at 22, maybe I could change it to 21, or I could do 20. Um, but that's a pretty good scale otherwise. Okay, so now I have all of my data, and this relationship is obviously linear. To get a line of best fit, you can go to Analyze linear fit. But first you have to click the graph. So you click the graph, you know that it's clicked by these little bars in the corner, and you go to analyze linear fit, and it'll give you a line of best fit. Alternatively, I'm going to X this out, uh, if you click your graph and you press this button right here, which is a short uh, shortcut, it will give you a linear fit. Okay, so at this point, what I want you to do is get a, um, oh sorry, what I want you to do is I want you to save this logger profile. You can go to file, save as, and it will tell you exactly where you're saving it. Most of you are probably going to save it to your download folder. Uh, call it something. You can put your last name if you want. So save that. Then you're going to go back to the Schoology assignment and you are going to upload that logger profile that's been filled out into this assignment. Okay, now we're going to do some analysis of that lab data. Uh, you need to get your notebook out for this. Okay, now that you have your notebook out, you can title these notes that we're about to take post-lab notes because it's, you know, after the lab. Uh, and we're going to go through a couple of things in every lab. And here is the position versus time graph that I had from Logger Pro. Um, but I'm going to write a couple of things on this so that we can take some notes. Okay, so for the specific equation, this is um, this is when we take the actual numbers from our line of best of it, and we write an equation specifically for the thing that we are studying, which was the car in this case. So for position, I'm going to use um, x instead of y, uh, and I should really write it like this. It's a linear relationship, so our equation is going to look like y equals mx plus b. Uh, but instead of using y, I'm going to write x for position. Uh, and instead of using m for slope, I'm going to actually use this number with the units. And I'll put it all in parentheses, so 18.05 centimeters per second. Instead of uh, an x-axis, I have a time axis. So I'm going to use lowercase t for the variable um, for, I guess, the x-axis. Don't use uppercase t. We use that. Uh, it means a different thing. And then my y-intercept. I do have a y-intercept. It's 15.23 centimeters. So if I wanted to, I could add that plus 
0.23, and I would put that in parentheses, centimeters. So that's my specific equation. Um, but what I want to do first is try and figure out whether or not I should have a y-intercept uh, and if it's important. So to do this, we have a rule of thumb, uh, which basically is called the 5% rule. If your y-intercept is less than 5% of your maximum y-value. So my, wall, my maximum y-value was, I think, like 360. Nine. Um, if 15.23 is less than 5% of 369, then I can basically just assume that it's zero. I can get rid of it. Um, and it turns out that it is. This is less than 5% of 369, a lot less. So I can ignore it and not include it. Um, so the reason for that is because the cars crossed the starting line when you started the stopwatch. So I should expect that the y-intercept, or the initial position when this object started, is zero. Um, the fact that there is a y-intercept is simply just error in the, the markings. Maybe sometimes I mark the car ahead of it uh, where it really was or behind where it really was. But since it's less than 5%, we can ignore it. And this is our specific equation. We can use that to predict where your toy car would be after a certain amount of time. Um, now, generally, the y-intercept, we kind of have already talked about it. We do have a variable for it. Mm, there's the bell. Uh, we would call this x at the beginning, right, the initial x. Uh, and so what I like to do for the initial x, the initial position, is I use a 0. Okay, so this is pronounced x not. You could say sub 0 or not. It just means the value of x at 0, which would be right here. This is where we would get the value of x at 0. It's similar to saying x and then you plug in 0. Or we can just call it x0 or x0. Um, the slope of this line is telling me something in centimeters per second. So that is obviously a measure of how fast the car is going. In physics, we call that speed. So instead of using m for a general slope, we would use v for velocity, which is basically, um, I think, Italian for speed. Uh, and this is a velocity that is a straight line, so we would call this an average velocity, which we put a bar above the variable to denote that it is an average. And it is going to be the change in x and change in t, or the, the rise over the run, right? So the rise is going to be delta x. The run is delta t, or the change in t. So I would write delta x over delta t. Um, and remember, the deltas, this is just like slope that you learned in some of your math classes. We could write this like x2 minus x1 over t2 minus t1. Um, but what is common is to call the x's instead of 2 and 1 to just say x and x0, x0. Um, and t minus t0 is kind of silly because uh, that implies time when time is 0, so it's just 0. So you can write this whole thing over t. Uh, or if you prefer, you could just leave it as delta t. OK, so that's the equation uh, for our slope, v. And when we write our general equation from all this, so I would use x for my position. Now instead of m for the slope, I would write v with a little bar above it to say that it's an average, uh, t for my horizontal axis variable. And then if we do have an initial position, it would be x naught. So this is our general equation that we can use for any object that is moving like the toy car was moving, um, where it was moving with a constant speed. The slope didn't change, so we would call that a constant speed or a constant, oh yeah, that's a great, velocity. So anytime a car is moving with constant velocity, I can use this equation. Let's do an example. A car with cruise control uh, on, so cruise control means that it's moving with a constant speed or constant velocity, uh, passes a speedometer that is 10 meters in front of you. And the sign reads 23 meters per second. How far in front of you will the car be 
three point after three point five seconds. Okay, so here I'm going to identify some of the information that is given to me. Uh, Ten meters. That's the initial position. So I would write x naught of the car. How far in front? That means I want to find x, the final position. Uh, it gives me an amount of time, 3.5 seconds. So we could say delta t, or again, if you just want to call it t, is 3.5 seconds. And the velocity is 23 meters per second. Okay, so this is all that's given to me, and now I'll think about the equation that I have, which is x equals vt plus x naught, and I plug in the information to solve for x. So 23 meters a second times 3.5 seconds plus 10 meters, which gives me 80.5 uh, the seconds here would cancel out and leave you with meters plus 10 meters so 90.5 meters that is the position of the car in front of you after 3.5 seconds okay now let's do one where we have to rearrange an equation a car with cruise control passes a speedometer so it's the exact same thing but now it wants to know how long will it take the car to be 50 meters in front of you. Okay, well in this case, I'm going to write this equation out. In this case, it doesn't give you the time, instead it gives you the final position. So you know the initial is 10, the final is 50, the velocity is still 23 meters a second, but it wants you to find t, the time. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this equation and solve for t, get it on the left side, then plug in numbers. So to do that, I would subtract the initial x position from both sides, it's just algebra. And then I would divide both sides by the average velocity, because right? I would cancel those two things out. So now I know the time is x minus x naught over the average velocity. So 50 meters minus 10 meters over 23. 50 minus 10 is 40, and 40 over 23 is 1.74. Um, and these units, the way that they would simplify, let me show you. So that's 40. Uh, the meters would cancel out, and you'd be left with this, 1 over 1 over seconds, uh, which is sort of like uh, if you divide a fraction, really you multiply it by the inverse. So that would be like saying 1 times, instead of 1 over seconds, seconds over 1, which is, yeah, it's just seconds. So our unit is seconds. There's the bell again. If, if that unit didn't really like make sense to you, uh, the 1 over 1 over seconds thing, it's fine. You know that we're finding time. Um, so you can trust that this cancels out to seconds, and, and you'll be right. Okay, congratulations. You have analyzed your uh, constant velocity car lab, and you've learned how to use this equation, which we got from graphing a position versus time graph. I'll show it up here. For the object. So this equation is something that we can now use to solve uh, various physics problems like we just did. Good job. Congratulations. You're done.